What's up guys, welcome back to News Wave. So we did get an update for the Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, which is something they probably should have said earlier, and that's that it's been delayed. Which sounds weird, but this is the Grand Theft Auto trilogy, so anything's possible. We'll go over that one here today. Also, we're going to be talking about a Switch accessory that's been talked about quite a bit over the last few days, mostly because it's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. And we're also going to be talking about a bit of a sales update around the Switch and the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Black Friday bundle. Because, uh, well, who needs Mario Kart 9 anyway? Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're going to start today with Halo Infinite. Specifically, though, the progression in the multiplayer side for Halo Infinite, which has been uh, quite the hot topic recently as people aren't too happy with the progress you make when it comes to your battle pass as you gain experience, which at times becomes a uh, very limited. However, it does appear that 343 is attempting to make some short-term changes to at least make things a bit better as you log in every day. We can see this tweet from John, who is the 343 a community manager, saying the first game you play in a day is 300 experience, then the second game's 200, then 200, and then uh, 100, 100, 100, and then 50. Basically, if you log in every day, you will have an experience boost for your first uh, six games or so, after which you'll just be getting 50 experience uh, like usual. The idea here being you want actual rewards beyond the 50, especially if you've completed all the challenges or the challenges just are not working out for you. You'll at least get something more than what we're getting now to accelerate the progress, but I'm looking at that as certainly a, a band-aid right now on a much larger problem, which is the progression system overall. To me, the more I look at this, the more I realize that this game probably wasn't going to be free to play initially, and they just slowly worked to that point, and they weren't really ready with the, the way they were going to set up their battle pass, their monetization, and all of this. I think the biggest thing they can incorporate, maybe short term, is giving some sort of bonus for winning a match. Because there's so many times I'm playing an objective-based game in quick play, and no one else is playing the objective. It's all just Team Slayer, and if we win the oddball match, great. We accidentally won uh, the oddball match. So maybe if you get 100 experience, at least for now, if you win a match, uh, as opposed to getting no extra bonus if you lose, is at least a step in the right direction. Something more you can add on as I'm sure they are spending quite a bit of time working out the larger issue with the progression. Also, we got an update around a game that I haven't heard about in a while. Actually, it's been a couple of years, and that's Everwild. Take a look at this tweet here, saying, Thrilled to announce that today I joined Rare as design director on Everwild. Really looking forward to making some amazing things with this incredible team and studio. Now, this tweet here is from the design, uh, the lead designer of Alien Isolation, who's the design director now for Everwild. And uh, apparently Everwild was announced before they even had any idea what it actually is. So that interesting decision there to go that route that at least just showed off. But I guess Rare wanted to at least say, hey, we're working on something else outside of Sea of Thieves. But it sounds like Everwild's not going to be out for a long time, which is weird because we saw it back in 2019, but we're still hearing about designers coming aboard here to get this game, I guess, moving along. So I'm thinking Everwild might actually come out after something like Fable even, but I guess we'll find out. This is the first update in a while that I've seen for Everwild to the point where I kind of forgot about the game. Oh, and we have some good news for Dying Light 2. We can see this tweet. Where they say, Dying Light 2 has gone gold. It wouldn't be possible without your support over all these years. We will spend an additional time making sure that we'll deliver the best possible experience for you. Thank you for being with us. Can't wait to meet you in the city on February 4th. This game originally was going to be coming out in about a week or so before they pushed it into the first week of February, and I am really looking forward forward to this game. So yes, I am happy to see that it's gone gold, basically meaning they're ready to print and ship a disc. They still have bugs and other things I'm sure to work out as this appeared to be a very ambitious title for Techland, but glad to see this update. Happy to hear that, yes, we are working towards an actual release date for it in the beginning of February because we've seen several games, especially with remote work and all the stuff going on, be delayed multiple times. So I didn't have that put out of the realm of possibility. At least here, it looks like we're on track for that early February release. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. 
Let's start right away with this Switch accessory that a lot of people are talking about, mostly because it looks absolutely ridiculous. We can see the Indiegogo page for it, which it's already reached its funding goal, it actually has over $117,000 with 217 backers. This is the Orion, double your Nintendo Switch screen size. Orion lets you play all your favorite games on the go with a 188% larger screen and stereo sound. They have an entire trailer they put out for this accessory and yeah, that's right. It's, it's like this little portable TV that you're walking around with. They also attach your Switch to the back that basically gets docked and you then get docked performance on this portable TV. They also have what looks like a battery that you'll be strapping to the back of it. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And this doesn't look that convenient to me. I, I guess they're trying to play it off as you'll see someone in the park holding this up and playing it. I mean, I have some questions about like how comfortable this would really be with longer play sessions. The kickstand actually doesn't look very good at all. It looks like one of the more flimsy kickstands they were used to with the original Switch. Seems strange considering you're relying on this little piece of plastic to hold up your Switch at 11.6 inch screen and then a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. They currently have it set for about $249 on their Indiegogo page and then they look to have it moving up to $299 with an expected ship date sometime November 2021, which it's December 1st, so I assume any time now this will be shipping out. But my question here is, I'm not really sure what problem this is solving. I, I don't know a lot of people out there who looked, look at the screen now, especially the seven inch OLED, and they're like, nope, it's gotta be larger than this seven inch screen. I mean, there have been complaints that the Switch itself already isn't a very portable system because it, it's trying to walk that line between being a home console and a handheld. So I don't really know why you would go like absolutely out there and say, here's a nearly 12 inch screen that you're gonna attach these little Joy-Cons to and then strap the Switch to the back. You know what? If you're gonna do this, you really gotta do this. It's not ridiculous enough, all right? 20 inch screen. Let's make that a reality. Let's walk around the park with this massive TV. And it's, I know this is basically the size of an iPad. I, I get that there. It just seems very weird because I just don't know a lot of people who are yelling about the Switch screen now needing to be much larger. I guess the one benefit though, is that it will work in its docked mode. So it'll be like 1080p for, relatively speaking for a lot of these games, which means you should get a better picture and better performance at least. But I don't know if that's worth the trade off for having this very large and bulky system to walk around with. You are most likely gonna have to put that in a backpack or something. I guess the one benefit would be is if you are traveling around with this, you could set it up, right? And kind of step away from it. And you could hook up your Xbox or your PlayStation if you're traveling with that. And you at least have a portable screen here for it. Um, and same, same with the Switch, but I just don't know if this is a good handheld solution. And there are other screens you can get that are similar to this where they basically fold up, but then you can also stand them up and then plug in other systems. But I mean, it's funded. People seem at least interested in it. Just let me know if this is something you were asking for. I actually did a poll around this and we'll go over that later on. Next up, let's talk about the Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. There has actually been quite a bit of news coming out around this trilogy, but it's been like smaller pieces of news. And really we were talking about it so much. I got kind of GTA trilogy out basically. I was like, all right, I I'm good. I'll come back if there's anything major that happens here. And we actually did have something happen. It got delayed. Not when it should have been delayed, obviously before the, the game itself came out. No, no, the physical copies have been delayed. We also had a full patch that is working to fix over a hundred bugs, more than the patch that we saw before stacked on top there. But we also had this tweet that says, here's another confirmation that we're playing highly modified mobile ports. There is still this widget left in the code, which asks you to choose touch controls. Uh, yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me too much. We also have this list here of those bugs that I was mentioning before. 1.03 for the patch notes and it's quite lengthy. Uh, I'll actually link below if you wanna take a look through them, but they did work to fix several things, which includes the misspellings on like the, the artwork and the signage. Remember people were running around and finding some of the weirdest 
issues and typos in in some of the signs that were that were being spotted out there in the Grand Theft Auto games. And they also fixed a number of instances where rain would appear indoors <laughs> during cutscenes. And MVG pointed out several times where rain was just going through different ceilings or even out on like the docks where they had a walk underneath and rain was just falling through. Otherwise though, it seems to be a lot of crashes that were being found throughout different storylines, but it does look like they are going to be delaying the physical copies of these games. And we can see this over on Rockstar's Twitter saying the release dates for the physical versions of Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, have changed. Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PS4 will now release on December 17th. And the Nintendo Switch version is coming in early 2022. Check your local retailer for availability. And this doesn't surprise me too much at this time because if you think about it, what they were probably gonna be shipping on that disc or on that cartridge next year would have been horrendously broken with how many bug fixes we are going over here. Remember, over a hundred that just came out. And then before that, it was like a whole laundry list of bug fixes and things they were trying to patch. They probably do have to delay these physical copies so that they can get some of those patches and fixes on the disc and on the cartridge. And the Switch version doesn't surprise me either that being further out because there's just more work to do on that Switch version. And there was a lot of talk that Nintendo was working with Rockstar to publish this game physically in certain regions. And who knows, maybe Nintendo thought, hey, we got to get this at least somewhat right. We can't release the game in the state that it came out day one on a cartridge because then you might as well require people to have some sort of internet connection to play any of the games. We already know that the Switch does require an internet connection at this time to download at least a couple of the games, we think, but one of them was probably going to be on there, most likely GTA 3, and on the Switch, that's like the most broken one. Now, one way I think would at least bring some goodwill is if we go into next year for the Switch version, they release it in a much better state and it's all in the cartridge. We don't have that big blue banner on the front. Just work this out so we have it all there on one cartridge. If it's a 32 gigabyte cartridge, you know what? That's the way it's gotta be. We saw it with The Witcher 3. I don't know why Rockstar and Nintendo can't work this out with something like Grand Th this Grand Theft Auto trilogy. It's not like Rockstar and Take-Two are exactly hurting for money or Nintendo could at least step in and just try to work out the overall cartridge cost because this is a game that is historical on the Switch and to me would make a lot of sense to have it there on the cartridge. But we'll look, I guess, to find out more about this as we head into 2022. But at least they did a correct thing here with this delay because they could not ship that day one version on a disc or on a cartridge the way it came out. Next up, let's talk about Xbox Cloud Gaming, a way for you to play some of these games off of Game Pass without having to download them and right on your phones. But there have been several drawbacks, which includes a latency and of course, kind of a blurry picture at times. What looks like Microsoft is at least working to address the overall quality of that picture. We can see this over on The Verge where they say xCloud's new clarity boost promises clearer streams, but it's only on edge. Now they did explain this, this from Melina Gonzalez says, uses a set of client side scaling improvements to improve the visual quality of the video stream. And looking at this from some of the comparisons that we have that were run by Tom Warren over on The Verge, as well as several screenshots that have kind of that slider showing off the differences. Well, it, it does make some finer details a bit clearer. I think the biggest thing that Microsoft is hopefully working towards is to increase the overall resolution. As now it's sitting at 1080p, I would like to see them work up to 4K, which is, I mean, something that Google Stadia has had for quite a while, and it is very noticeable. If you use uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming versus Stadia, Stadia, I think, is still a better overall experience when it comes to the picture quality itself. Now, Clarity Boost is currently only available on the Microsoft Edge Canary browser. They did say that it will be rolling out and available to all Edge users by next year, and I... I assume this is something that will eventually be rolled out to just Xbox One users as you can stream Xbox Series X and S games that will be specifically on that platform on your older Xbox One through game streaming. It's at least some improvement that Microsoft is introducing here. Like I said, reducing the latency is probably the number one thing they should be really focusing on now, but I would like to see them bump the resolution up to 4K with this clarity boost. We can see some pretty impressive stuff, but sounds like we'll be finding out more about this next year as they work to roll this out to all Edge users and then Xbox One users, I'm sure. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Nintendo Switch Black Friday bundle, specifically in the UK, where it appears to have done 
really, really well. We'll take a look at this over on Twitter. This from Christopher Dring saying, last week was the biggest sales week ever for Nintendo Switch in the UK. Yeah, last week was the biggest sit. Wow. Absolute dominant display. The Switch plus Mario Kart 8 plus three months of online bundle stole the show over Black Friday. Xbox Series S was in a very distant second place. This is very, very impressive, by the way. Considering, according to Nintendo, we're halfway through the Switch's life and it's still doing this well in places like the UK with a bundle for a game that came out a month after the Switch itself came out. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is on absolute tear. I don't expect it to stop anytime soon, which is one of the reasons. I don't know if Mario Kart 9 is gonna be coming out anytime soon. I still believe that's a good one for Nintendo to save as a cross-generation game. And to me, should be a, an absolute launch title. Like there should be no question, it should be there at launch for whatever Nintendo's next generation system is. If it's another hybrid uh, system, great. Have that game, that Mario Kart 9, be out on the current Switch and then on the next gen Switch. And that would work to push those off store shelves, no problem. Even if, if they have to go to a higher price point of like, $400, uh, for example, there. But here we are now with the Switch continue to sell well, even with the bundle that, I mean, myself included, found pretty disappointing, mostly just because it wasn't very creative and we've seen it year after year after year. But uh, hey, if it's not broke, I guess Nintendo's not gonna fix it because as we see here, people still really want this bundle and it keeps selling. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a little poll that I posted up yesterday where I asked, what do you think about the current size of the Switch OLED seven inch screen? 7% 7 said it's too large. I want the Switch to be more pocket sized. 75% said it's just right. And then 19% said it's too small. I want a larger screen. You know, I have, I have heard people say that it is too small and they would want like an eight or nine inch screen. I personally think the seven inch screen is pretty good. I feel like if we go into next gen and they move it up to 1080p with an OLED display, that would look awesome. I do think that there is also a market as there are some people who did vote for, or they want it to be smaller for an OLED switch light. And I kind of wonder if that's the next system up. If Nintendo just kind of transitions their current switch light over to an OLED system. I think that'd be really cool um, to see that happen. But I just don't know a lot of people who are like, you know what? This Switch needs to be about the same size as a large iPad. There's no way around it. I have to be carrying around a mini TV. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from U20 saying, we there are a lot of glitches in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. It's kind of insane how many, I mean, there's Pokemon duplication glitch is the, is the serving of land that is, Turning non-shiny Pokemon into shiny Pokemon. There's a glitch to teach moves to Pokemon. They should be able to learn getting event Pokemon that haven't had their event yet. And most of them surround two core glitches in the game, the check summary glitch and trainer battle surf glitch. It's really kind of insane, but it's giving me so much enjoyment right now on a secondary save file. The weird thing about that is there are so many glitches, the big one being a duplication glitch, which for I'm sure Game Freak and the Pokemon company, Ruins a lot of stuff. They they don't want that to happen. And that I thought was the biggest reason we didn't have cloud saves because they didn't want there to be some sort of duplication glitch that popped up. Well, I guess we can have cloud saves now because people already figured out how to do it without cloud saves and back up there. But yeah, a lot of glitches in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I guess it has led to some pretty impressive speed runs. And like you say, people having fun with a secondary save file or maybe just their main save file, but it is a bit strange how many were present in, in these copies of Pokemon games, but they're from Ilka and I guess they have a lot of stuff to work out here. I'm sure with many, many updates going forward. So I guess if you're someone who's enjoying them, you might wanna pass on a lot of the updates that you try to get, uh, that the system tries to prompt for you to do. And ladies and gentlemen, that's good to hear for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike, leave comments down below, but everything we talked about here today was that Orion Switch accessory at 11.6 inch screen that you walk around with. Is that something you're interested in or you think it's kind of strange. Also, what about the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy physical copies being delayed, the Switch even, into next year? And then the whole thing with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and that Switch Black Friday bundle. Did you pick it up? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.